You know, in ham radio, we spend an awful lot of time trying to solve problems. And no sooner have you solved one problem, you have another problem. Now, in this particular van of mine, this uh, small motorhome, it's a van conversion. It's all metal, lovely reflective surface. And I thought I'd mount the mobile antenna on the rear door, the rear door lip, using like a hatch mount or something like that. Unfortunately, if you watched the previous video, I couldn't do that because the door is so flush that it won't accept a hatch mount. So I had to resort to a mag mount. Now, the only mag mount I've got is a fairly smallish one, seven inches or so diameter. And that means to say that it's probably okay for VHF and okay for the HF bands, the higher bands like uh, perhaps 15 meters, 12 meters, certainly 10 meters. But when you get to 20 meters, there's really not enough capacity. Now, because there's ridges on the roof of this van, <laughs> I couldn't really consider a three-legged mount because that three-legged mount would only be making contact on the ridges. So there wouldn't be enough capacity. So I thought, what else can I do? And this is what I ended up doing. I found in my box an SO239 socket. That has a nut on it to fasten it to a chassis and a very convenient washer with a solder tag on it. What I needed to do was to increase the capacity between the mag mount and the vehicle. But of course, I only had this single mag mount. So with this nut and with this solder tag, I attached some braiding. Now it's very easy to get braiding. You get yourself an old bit of RG213. You cut the plastic outer sheathing off. That leaves you with the woven outer braid and the inner conductor, which is encapsulated in the, whatever it is, plastic insulator material. Now, with a pair of pliers, it's very easy to pull the inner conductor together with the plastic surround out of the braiding. It leaves you with some flat braiding. Well, it's flat once you flatten it with your fingers or stamp on it or tread on it, whatever you like. You ended up then with about three meters of braiding. Now, the trick is to put that braiding on the roof of the vehicle and increase the capacity of the mag mount. So what you do is you solder the braid in to the solder tag, then you put that solder tag over the SO239 on the mag mount. You then use the nut that was on the original unit, little tiny unit which I showed you, the um, SO239 which uh, has a solder tag on it. You put the nut onto the Mount the mag mount on the SO239 on the vehicle, and you've then attached your uh, braiding to it. You then get some tape and you tape the braiding on to the roof of the vehicle, as you can see here. Now, this is only a temporary, this is only a temporary sort of attempt. Um, I'll make it more permanent. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I'll make sure that that braid is attached more permanently. The point is that it does increase the capacity of the mag mount significantly. I don't know what the, in, the increase in capacity was, but it's probably about 30 or 40 puff, maybe more than that. It certainly enables that mag mount to now be used on the 20 meter band. I haven't actually tried 40 yet because I, I probably need some more braiding, but it's a very convenient way of adding capacity to a mag mount without resort into something like these three-legged mag mounts, which are quite effective, but they are rather like limpets. <laughs> and once, once they're attached to your vehicle, it's a difficult job to get them off. You need an, an antenna on top of it to sort of use it as a lever. And with some of the modern car roofs, you can see the roof moving about a bit. Mm. So if you have, like me, a problem where you've got a single mag mount, but it's not, there's not enough capacity to work on the band you want to, then try this trick. Get some braid, get yourself a solder tag that fits over the SO239, and then just attach that braid to the roof of the vehicle and see how you get on. Another option, of course, is copper tape, which uh, I will try. I haven't got any copper tape at the moment, but it's uh, worth a try and see how it compares with the braiding. Not quite sure 
uh, how robust it is and whether it will take solder very well. It's a nice little trick. It works. Well, at least it worked for me. By the time you watch this video, I shall be up in Yorkshire. It's about 240 miles north of uh, my location down here in the south. And I'm going to take the opportunity of testing the diamond centre loaded range. They have the suffix CL. So the 20 metre one would be HF20 CL. And the 17 metre one, which I'm also going to take with me, is the HF16 CL. Don't ask me why it's 16, but anyway, it is, uh, despite the fact that it covers the 17 metre band. Centre loading does have some advantages, and I'll check them out. And once I've made the trip, I'll uh, no doubt uh, cover it in a video. I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like, but we've got a bit of sunshine here at the moment. Whether it's going to be like that up in Yorkshire, who knows? We'll find out. Thanks for watching this video. You take care. See you in the next video.